Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at solving linear inequalities in one variable. When we're looking at a linear inequality, we're looking at something of the form ax plus b is less than zero. Now, when we're dealing with inequalities, there are a lot of different inequality symbols. So right now I have the less than symbol in there, but our inequality could have the less than or equal to symbol, or it could have the greater than symbol, or even greater than or equal to. All of these different inequality symbols could be in there. Okay, it's just not an equal sign. As we're looking at a linear inequality, one thing that needs to be true is that a value in our inequality cannot be zero. We do need to have that variable in there, so if a was zero, it would cancel out of there. So we need to make sure that a is not zero to keep that variable in there. Just like solving a linear equation, there are some operations that we can use for inequalities that will result in equivalent inequalities. So one of those is addition. So if we had something like x minus 7 is greater than 4, trying to get rid of that minus 7, we can add 7 to each side to get x is greater than 11. We could also use subtraction to get an equivalent inequality. So if we had something like z plus 3 is less than or equal to 9, we can get rid of that plus 3 by subtracting 3 from each side, and then we'll be left with z is less than or equal to 6. Another operation that we can use to get equivalent inequalities is multiplication. So if we had something like t over 3 is greater than or equal to 7, over 3 means divided by 3, so to get rid of divided by 3, we can multiply each side by 3. So on the left-hand side, those 3's will cancel out, so we'll get t is greater than or equal to, and then on the right-hand side, we have to take 7 times 3, which is 21. Now, one thing we do have to be careful about when we're doing multiplication is if we multiply by a negative number. So let's say, for example, we had x over negative 2 is greater than 4. To get rid of this divided by negative 2, we're going to have to multiply by negative 2 on each side. When we do that, if we multiply by a negative number, we have to flip our inequality symbol around. So right now it says greater than, but we need to flip it around to be a less than symbol because we multiplied by a negative number. So we would get x is less than negative 8 as our answer on that one. We can also use division as an operation to yield equivalent inequalities. So if we had 2x is less than 7, there's no operation written between the 2 and the x, so that's implied multiplication. And in order to get rid of multiplication, we have to divide each side by that 2. Now on the left-hand side, those 2's will cancel out, so we'll have x is less than. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. Now, a lot like multiplication with division, if you divide by a negative number, you also have to flip the inequality symbol around. So if we had negative 3x is greater than or equal to 12. To get rid of that times negative 3, we're going to have to divide by negative 3. Because we divided by a negative number, we need to flip this inequality symbol around. It was greater than or equal to, so now we need to flip it around to be less than or equal to. And when we take 12 divided by negative 3, we get negative 4 as our answer. In this example, we're going to look at solving a linear inequality. So we've got 3 times x minus 1 plus 2 is less than or equal to 5x plus 6. First thing I'm going to do on the left-hand side is take care of my distributive property. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Then we've got our plus 2 is less than or equal to 5x plus 6. We can combine like terms on the left-hand side with the negative 3 and the positive 2. So we're going to get 3x minus 1 is less than or equal to 5x plus 6. I'm going to get rid of this minus 1 by adding 1 to each side of my inequality. I'm also going to get rid of this 5x on the right-hand side. It's a positive 5x, so we're going to need to subtract 5x from each side. So that leaves us with negative 2x is less than or equal to 7. Now we need to get rid of this negative 2 that's attached to the x. There's multiplication happening in there, so we need to use division. So we're going to divide each side by negative 2. 
Now we are dividing by a negative number, so we need to remember to flip our inequality symbol around. It was a less than or equal to, so we flip it around to a greater than or equal to. On the left hand side, the negative twos cancel out, so we just get x. On the right hand side, if we take seven divided by negative two, we get negative 3.5. Now we can also write this answer out in interval notation. We're looking at x values that are greater than or equal to negative 3.5. So negative 3.5 is the smallest value in our interval. It is included since our inequality has the equals to line underneath that greater than. So this gets a square bracket around it. We're looking at all of the numbers that are greater than negative 3.5. So this interval is going to run out to positive infinity. And infinity always gets a parenthesis around it because it's not included in the interval. We're going to look at another example of solving a linear inequality. But now we've got some fractions in there that we're going to need to deal with. When we're dealing with fractions, we want to find the least common denominator of our fraction and then do some multiplying by that. So looking at all of these denominators, I see 2, 3, 4, and then another 3. The lowest common denominator between all of those is 12. So what we're going to do is multiply each side of our inequality by 12. And we have to remember to multiply everything on each side by that 12. I'm going to use some distributive property here. So taking 12 times x over 3. Well, this is this 12 is really a fraction. It's 12 over 1. When you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the tops, so we get 12x. And then you multiply the bottom value, so 3 times 1 is 3. Now I'm going to take that 12 and multiply it to my 1 half. So I'm going to get 12 on top and 2 on bottom. And this is greater than. Over here, we need to distribute this other 12. And again, this is 12 over 1. So taking 12 over 1 times this x over 4, we're going to get 12x over 4. And multiplying the 12 over 1 to the 1 third, we're going to get 12 over 3. Now we've got some fractions in here that we can reduce down. 12 divided by 3 is 4 with the x on there. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And that's greater than here 12 divided by 4 is 3x. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now we want all of our variables on one side and our numbers on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 3x from each side of my inequality. I also need to get rid of this plus 6 that's over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to subtract 6 from each side. Now taking 4x minus 3x gives me just x. These 6's cancel out. We've got greater than. Over here these 3x's cancelled out so we just have to take 4 minus 6 to get negative 2. Now again, I can take this answer and write it out in interval notation. We're looking at x values that are greater than negative 2. So negative 2 is the smallest value in the interval. This is not included because we don't have our equals 2 line, so this gets a parenthesis around it. And then we're looking at all of the values that are greater than negative 2. So this interval runs out to positive infinity, and infinities always get parentheses around them because we cannot include them in our interval. For our last example, we're going to look at solving a double-sided inequality. So we've got negative 3 is less than 2x plus 5, all over 3, is less than or equal to 5. So we're going to take a lot of the same steps. So I'm looking at this fraction in the middle. We need to get rid of the divided by 3. So we're going to do some multiplying by 3. But since we have a double-sided inequality, we need to multiply both sides of our inequality by the 3. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 3 to cancel out that denominator. I have to multiply the right side of my inequality by 3, and I also have to multiply the left side of my inequality by the 3. So now we've got negative 9 is less than 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 15. Now we need to get rid of that plus 5 in there, so we're going to subtract 5. And again, we need to do that from both sides of our inequality, so the right-hand side and the far left-hand side. So now we've got negative 14 is less than 2x is less than or equal to 10. Last thing we need to do is get rid of that 2 that's attached to our x. There's multiplication happening in there, so we need to use division to cancel that out. And again, we're dividing everything in our inequalities. So taking negative 14 divided by 2, we get negative 7 is less than x is less than or equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now we can write this answer out in interval notation as well. Negative 7 is the lowest number in our interval. This inequality does not have the equals to portion on it, so that gets a parenthesis around it. 5 is the biggest value in the interval. 
This side does have the equals two line underneath it, so five is included in the interval, so it needs a square bracket around it. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.